Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. My wife always likes for me to start uh, our show off with the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. Me ka inoa o ka makua ke keiki a me ke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Lord, bless our conversation together today. We're, we're here coming to you from beautiful Waikiki Beach, and our guest uh, will be joining us in a moment. Anthony Stefano, I think, is coming to us from New Jersey. So we're kind of spanning the globe here with uh, the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. There's a there's a a scripture verse, scripture verse that says this, if you seek me, I will let you find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. The Lord is calling us to seek him. And then there's another verse that I love. It says, it says this, I know what I have in store for you. Plans for peace, not destruction. A future reserved for you full of hope. If you seek me, I will let you find me. So that, that's the preface to that verse. God has a plan for you. When God created the universe, Cindy and I are going through studying the book of Genesis. We've been stuck in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 and, uh, for the first six weeks of our study. But in there, God, when he made, the, for example, when he made the, the sun and the moon, he made them to rule the day. The sun would rule the day and the, and the, and the moon the night. But also when God made man, he said, I want you will, he gave, a, he gave man dominion. When God creates, he creates with an intention. When God created your spiritual soul and fused it into your body at the moment of your conception, he didn't just create this, this beautiful uh, being made in the image of God. But he created you with an intention and, and with a purpose. And we need to come, we need to come to that place. And you know, um, the purpose is, is, of course, to know and to love and to serve God, but it's also, which is ba basically the pursuit of happiness. Uh, and when you do that, you, you, find, you find fulfillment, you find your joy. But God has your pl a plan for your life, and today we're going to introduce uh, someone who we're going to dig into that whole, that whole concept. We have with us today as our guest a good friend of mine, Anthony, Anthony Stefano. Anthony is um, a Knights of Malta, correct, Anthony? Uh, yes, member That's of the Knights of Malta for the last 22 years. He's written over 20 books, uh, five best-selling Christian books. Uh, the ones for the adults, A Travel Guide to Heaven, it was one of my father's last books that he read. And it gave him, it totally prepared him for his, uh, his death. He was, a, he was a Catholic deacon, so that book means a lot to our family. And uh, he wrote The Ten Prayers God Always Says Yes To. And he's also written, this is what's so cool, he's also written some children's books, um, The Donkey That No One Could Ride and, and The Little Star. And so, uh, so welcome, Anthony DiStefano, to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Well, thank you for having me, Bear. It's a real honor to be with you. I'll bet it is. It is. <laughs> it is. You know well, I've admired you. I've admired you for years and years and years. Well, I, thanks, Anthony, but I got to tell you, so, I want to tell the sure. audience something. There's two men in my life that were very, came into my life at a very pivotal time. One was Stephen Ray. My father sent Steve Ray's book to me, Crossing the Tiber, and it was the final thing that turned, re, caused me to revert back to Catholicism. And so that was very significant. And now Steve Ray is a good friend of mine. I have him on my show quite a lot. And then there was this other gentleman, Anthony Stefano, that I met through Melody Green, right? Melody Green, uh, the great Protestant... Uh, Keith Green, the great, he, one of the first four or five rock and roll musicians, all came out of her her kitchen basically, and so uh, uh, and and because of her involvement uh, with things that Anthony was involved with, we met Anthony, and then Anthony said, you know, let me introduce you to my uh, literary manager, and Peter, uh, w because of Anthony, I was able to ha have get my first book. Uh, deal done and that opened up the door for the radio show and the TV show and all that so it was Anthony and Stephanie who believed in me and affirmed me and just said you can do this and so those two men 
uh, one brought me to the church and the other one uh, threw me into the front lines. So, Anthony, thank you for all you mean to me personally. Well, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, like I said, it's a great honor. And uh, thank you for saying that. I, you, you exaggerated my role greatly, but I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I forgot to mention and, the most important thing, though, Anthony. What's that? It was on the deck of the Moana with Peter, uh, our literary manager. You know, I know who recently passed away. And uh, it, was at the, it was at that place that I was introduced to a gin and tonic by Anthony DiStefano. <laughs> now, that's by far the much more important contribution in life, of course. It, it's a perfect uh, tropical refreshment, you know. And so I remember you were doing a book signing. I don't know where it was. And you were, I was doing a book signing next to you, and there's like five or six people at my table. And yours, I couldn't even see you. You were just surrounded at your book signing table. And do you remember what I did this I think you brought me over a drink, but not a gin and tonic. No, what? It was a gin and tonic. Might have, they might have put club you. soda in it or something, but no, it was ah. a gin, poorly made gin and tonic. But I had to stick my hand through a crowd of people, so all you saw was a hand come through the crowd. I remember <laughs> it well. I remember it well. Well, thank you again for that. I'm sure I needed it. Well, tell us about what about the, I know about this airplane. That if people are watching this on YouTube, you can see there's this really cool uh, airplane that Anthony just oh. loves. He's a private pilot. What is that? What is that? That that airplane this one on, right on the credenza? Yes. What is that? Oh, that that's 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 a plane that I don't own it anymore. I used to own it. Uh, it's a bird dog, an L nineteen E bird dog rec reconnaissance uh, airplane that was used in the Vietnam War, and it was sold to me by my good friend Judge William Clark, who was the National Security Advisor under Ronald Reagan, and every single member of the Reagan administration flew in that plane. And he knew that I was a pilot, and I told him, Bill, if you ever sell this plane, you better give it to me or sell it to me. And he did, and I had many, many happy hours flying it uh, for many years. But I did I did uh, get a different plane after that. Small it, plane. These are not jets. Oh, no. it's it's. It, was it a tail dragger or no? Oh, yes, it's a tail dragger. You know, tricycles are for kids, you know. <laughs> I was always intimidated to, to I mean, I, 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 I got my private pilot license, but mostly just to make sure that my son, uh, um, uh, and Josh, when I went through that project together, it was a father and son thing, but he's a, Josh is the one who really knows how to fly. But Anthony, your new book is why we, one, one of the reasons we, ha we have you on the show. And I'm looking through my notes, Anthony, will you help me? I don't have the title right in front of me. I thought I did. Sure. Sure. It's called 30 Days to Your New Life. Uh, a guide to transforming yourself from head to soul, and soul is spelled S-O-U-L. Head to soul. That's beautiful. So the title tips you off as to what kind of book, not just any um, personal development book. A little right, bit well, more. So, so then, so tell us a, a little bit about what prompted you to write this book, then. Well, uh, you know, the, the truth of the matter is I, I look out there, I have eyes, and I see that there are so many people who are struggling and uh, mm. with unhappiness and uh, loneliness and confusion. This is a very, very confused time we're living in, uh, no matter what part of this political spectrum you have to be on. So there's a lot of suffering in the world, and that's why I've always been a, a big advocate of the personal development industry. It's one of the things I loved most about you when I met mm. you, because you were always, from the very beginning, coaching people, coaching mm. people to be the best they could be. Now, I'm for anybody who can alleviate uh, suffering and help people get off their uh, keisters and change their lives for the better. Uh, but, but I realized early on that there's a serious limitation uh, with self-help programs. I've taken a lot of them myself over the years. They work for a while, but the results are usually temporary. Uh, when life uh, hits you with a two by four, and you know, at some point, unfortunately, it always does, all those self-help programs tend to, to crumble. And the reason is, that they're based too much on self-help and not enough on God's help. That's the big trap of the self-help industry. You can become very, very successful monetarily. Uh, you can uh, be successful in any field you happen to choose to be in. And yet you could wind up being a miserable person if, you're, if, you're, if your values are screwed up. You know, look at all the Hollywood movie stars out there mm. who uh, spin out of control and kill themselves. You know, with drugs and, and, and you know, if, you, if, if your priorities are screwed up, you're never going to be happy. Interestingly enough, and I'll say this too, this works also with overly religious people. Mm -hmm. People who are, are very spiritual, sometimes they think that if they have a big problem, all they have to do is say a prayer to God and God is going to magically wave a wand and all their problems are going to disappear if they have faith. And yes, God can do that, but they don't realize the truth of that old saying. 
you know, God helps those who help themselves. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the personal development movement has discovered a lot of good tools involving goal setting and uh, controlling the your emotional states and utilizing the power of momentum, etc. And so, what the bottom line is this, Bear? What my book tries to do. It tries to take the best of both worlds and combine them. I wanted to write a book that utilized the very best self-help, personal development principles, but balanced and corrected them with orthodox, traditional Christian principles, sacramental Catholicism. And my hope is that the results that people get won't just be temporary, but, but will be long-lasting and, and even permanent. You know, my dad was a professional speaker, and he, and, he, and he was one of the first to talk about goal setting and things like that. He had a worldwide speaking. And then, he, and then he became, and then he had a, a real deep conversion to Jesus. He was always Catholic, had a deep thing. And he did the same thing, uh, uh, you know, many, many years ago, integrating that. It's the both-end way of Catholicism. We take the best. For example, he, Thomas Aquinas and his love for Aristotle. He took the best of Aristotle and combined it with Christian revelation and theology and, 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 and melded those together to, uh, to, you know, bring forth the Summa. So basically this book is like the Summa. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it anything in the class with the film, and I wouldn't. They do, you know what? I'm very, I'm very proud of that they, uh, that they've called this. Uh, the way they've pitched this book is uh, the tagline is Thomas Aquinas or Tony Robbins meets Thomas Aquinas. Okay, that yeah, I didn't see that, but that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to be compared to to either of those guys. That's so Robert cool. It's been a big help, but but Thomas Aquinas. I mean, I, well, I think you're. I think I've always called you a saint. I mean, the problem is getting Anthony on our show is the halo glows so bright it's hard to get. We're talking with Anthony DeStefano, my good friend. This is the Bear Wasden Adventure. We'll be right back. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue. Through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been? And how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wasink Adventure. My publisher wants me to remind you that our, my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is ready for you to order right now. You can, and doing so, going to Amazon and pre-ordering it really helps, uh, really helps it go up uh, in Amazon's way that they promote books. And also, if you were to do that and write a review, it would be really helpful. But this book could have been based on my next guest, Anthony uh, De Stefano. But one of the things Anthony and his and his new book. What's the title of the book again? It's I have every book title of yours, but that one. Sure. Thirty days to your new life. 
uh, a guide to transforming yourself from head to soul. From head to soul. And, you know, I was thinking the same thing that, um, you know, it, I, was, I went through and read all the Dante's, you know, the three, the three books. And in, in the Purgatorio, or actually in the, in the, even in, in, the, um, in the, the downward spiral of, of, of the Inferno, it's always self, 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 self. And uh, I, I know people that they get so involved reading the self-help books, but it's it's self, 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 self. There, so there are so there are tremendous um, skills, goal setting, planning, uh, understanding who you are and what what how you're motivated. But um, that needs to be cultivated within the context of what is your real purpose in the world, you know, and that is to really know God. And to and and that and to find out that God has a plan for you, and then then the spiral goes upwards. Yes, yes, and you were you were talking about this in your uh, introductory remarks too about goal setting. Now, uh, it's true that self improvement always precedes great accomplishment. You know, uh, God does use crooked pencils to write straight lines, as they say, but He always straightens out those pencils as 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 fast as He possibly can. If you have more energy, if you have uh, more strength, more willpower, if you know more, if you, if you, the more you have, the more you can give, the more you can work in the service of the Lord. So self-improvement is very important for anything. Amen. Um, and, 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 and also goal setting is very important because how in the world are you going to hit a target if you don't have a bullseye, right? Yeah. Goals give you a bullseye to shoot for, and that's something the self-help industry gets right. You need to set goals that uh, will inspire you. You need to uh, they, need, they need to be big enough to to pull you into the future because you're mm. gonna have so many goals that come in the way. Uh, you, these are just you know personal development 101 principles. You've got to write the goals down. Mm -hmm. You've got to mm -hmm. you've got to look at them every day. You know, you can't just do it twice a year. You've got to take a whole bunch Every of actions yep. to do a shotgun approach. So there's all kinds of things that go along with goal setting that are you that that humanly make them possible. But the most important thing is something that the personal development industry doesn't tell us, and it's something you just did tell us, and that's that you have to involve God. God is already in your future. He made you. He knows what's going to make you happy. Uh, you need to take into account God's goals for you and so if you're praying re regularly god will help you achieve the right goals and he will uh prevent you from achieving the wrong goals and here's the point i was going to make there everybody's got dreams everybody's got dreams but what you have to understand is that your dream is not necessarily your destiny your mm. destiny is what god wants for you wow it's it's god's goal for you it's god's objective for you mm -hmm. only destiny is going to make you happy Mm -hmm. Okay, so and the only way to get clarity on your destiny is to be praying to God about about it regularly. Every day you should say, God, show me my destiny. Show me my destiny. And, uh, you know, I mean, I could go on and on and talk to you. I wanted to be, when I was growing up, you know, Bear, I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, I always wanted to be a doctor. Uh, but a couple of little things got in the way. Uh, organic chemistry, integral calculus, <laughs> uh, girls. Yes. Uh, so I was very upset when my dream didn't come true, uh, you know, and but then later on I realized something. I realized something else. The other goal I had was to be a writer uh. and, and I tried writing and, and all kinds of books, history books. Uh, uh, I tried ghost writing for people. It wasn't very satisfying. I wrote a, a, a column for a newspaper, uh, you know, local newspaper. And then one time, uh, Bear, I was on a train and I read the screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis. And it mm. hit me then it, 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 that, that it was so clever. He was writing about theology in such a clever way, in such a helpful way. It, it was like an aha moment. I've mm -hmm. only had a few of those in my life. But I said, maybe I could combine my goal to be a doctor and my goal to be a writer. And maybe what God really wants me to be is a healer. Mm -hmm. A healer. That's what the, he had given me clues even when I was a little kid. Mm. And my dream was to be a doctor, but that really wasn't what he wanted. He wanted me to keep seeking him. And then eventually he showed me that it wasn't to be a, a, a healer with surgery, but rather to be a healer. Uh, and I'm not trying to brag. Uh, mm -hmm. What I hope to be anyway is a healer with my writing. So it was only in prayer and after becoming a committed Christian and a committed Catholic 
that I was able to discern my destiny, which was God's goal. Mm. You know, yeah, and you do. Your books come across. You know, I love that C.S. Lewis and the G.K. Chesterton sort of uh, kind of a flavor too, where you, they're just this kind of practical. Uh, jo jovial might not be the word, but there's this kind of way, these examples that you give that kind of <clears throat> little bit left field examples sometimes that you that get your attention. You go, oh, okay, now I, now I put that that comes down to earth for me now and understand the spiritual concept. You know, there's this key scripture verse for me when I was 19. <clears throat> There was a scripture verse that that and I had and I had recently experienced a, a real deep conversion to the Lord out of Habakkuk of all things, and I don't know if you're familiar with that verse, but it's but it says, um, to it says uh, God says to this prophet, write this vision down in letters that are big enough so the one that is running can read it while he is running, and if the vision tarries, wait for it. And the, way, the word for wait in, the, in Hebrew is to mend a net. So it really means to prepare, wait for it, for it will surely come. And so I began to write my, my goals down in big letters and, and then ran with them. But the thing is, in, in my book, too, I mentioned it, too, is that when you give your life to the Lord, he gives you new and right desires. And then he gives you those desires you know he fulfills those in you as you pursue them and when you in your book you when you talk about the bringing aquinas and uh tony robbins together that's really bringing the cardinal virtues together with the the theological virtues without the virtues of faith hope and love prudence justice self-mastery and fortitude you know they they they, they have a great purpose but uh but god wants us to have a personal relationship with him and when we do, he'll whisper things into your soul, and 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 you'll and you'll realize is, is that you, God, or you know you you feel that little nudge, sometimes a shove, uh, and you just start saying yes to the Lord. Lord, close these doors that you don't want open, and open the doors you want, you do want open, and just how, how can you describe the process of how people discern the voice of God, and then how they get traction? Well, there's so much in that in that question. You know, uh, obviously, the first and foremost way of discerning God's will is is through prayer. You have to, you you have to, and I say this in the book as a, as a very practical step. You know, uh, to take control of your life, especially if it's spinning out of control, you got to put God first, and you can put God first in a very practical, literal way, and that means that the first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. when you're coming out of dreamland and you're entering the world of the living. Offer up a quick prayer to God, thanking him for another day. Don't let your first thought be, oh, how many likes did my Instagram post get? Or, oh, I have this uh, very stressful meeting in two hours. Or, oh, my gosh, I got to pay my mortgage today. It, those things are important, but don't let it be the first thought of that. Give your first thought to God. Say in our Father if you have time. If you're a Catholic, we have something called the morning offering. It's a beautiful, you know, keep it on uh, on your nightstand or, or, or on your smartphone. Let that be the first thing you look at. Uh, put God first and God will put you first. That's mm. that's 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 one of the one of the main things to do. And you can do it very, very easily. Uh, you know, there used to be a great saying, no Bible, no breakfast, no Bible, no bed, mm -hmm. you know, and the Protestants, of course, love that statement, but something Catholic should should, should employ too. So yes, God's got to be first in your life. Of course, other things that determine um, discerning God's will, a lot of time, you know, you have to really look at what your state in life is. This is very important, Bear, because I know people who are very spiritual, they're very religious, and they, they want to go off and be missionaries. And so they want to go to Bangladesh and serve uh, the poor there. Um, but then they wind up leaving their families to do it. And, and now, being a missionary is a very high calling in life, but sometimes, and I'm not speaking against any, sometimes the reason why it's easy for people to go off and, you know, give everything up and run away somewhere to do God's will is because they don't want to stay right here and deal with the responsibilities they have as a husband or a wife or a father. So one of the biggest uh, ways to determine and discern God's will is, is it consistent with your state in life? Because we know that your state in life, meaning whether you're a married person or a father, 
or a mother. We know, just like if you're a priest, we know that's God's will already. We know that he's spoken. Right that's on. God's will. Amen. And so therefore, if you have some desire to do something, one of the first things you have to uh, determine is, does it go against my state in life? Does it go against my role as a father or mother? And of course, is it sinful in any way? Mm. You know, those are different things you can do to to uh, discern God's will. And then, of course, well, take Anthony, we, steps we, in that direction. We got to take, take a quick break. We'll be right sure. back. Anthony uh, speaks at 100 miles an hour, but gusts to 180, 100, 180 words a minute. We'll, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up at the Bishop Markham Ranch in Goldendale, Washington. Fisher Man. The Columbia River Bar, where the mighty Columbia meets the massive Pacific, is no place for wimps to work. There are hundreds of sobering reasons. Over 200 shipwrecks and many more boats met their demise. As to why this boiling cauldron of water is rightly called the Graveyard of the Pacific, my great-grandfather, a stalwart, virtuous man and lay preacher, was one of the pioneering fishermen who came to Iwaka, Washington, to strike a rich on salmon in the 1870s, a time when ships were made of wood and men of iron. My ancestors faced this very water in 30-foot sailboats, not unlike those on the Sea of Galilee. Give some understanding as to why Jesus chose commercial fishermen as four of the Twelve Apostles. Hardy souls, these men, men of perseverance, willing to take a risk to face death and then go at it again. As you may recall, Jesus called James and John the sons of thunder. Having worked on fishing boats, I know a little something about fishermen who thunder. Colorful, raw language, raw emotion, and the sheer force of will. Suffering persecution and the threat of death, those boys stood up for what was right, pushing through the storms of life. It's time for men of the church to heed the call to be men of virtue and perseverance for the sake of righteousness ever pressing upstream with God's truth as a flow of culture pushes back against what is right, true, just, and good. Be a fisherman. Get on board and grab an oar. This is Dan Laboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Um, I'm just going to keep let, reminding you guys, Long Ride Home Season 4 is airing on EWTN now. It'll soon be up on Prime Video, so you can power watch it with your family. 33 episodes of Long Ride Home, but the new Season 4 was all filmed right here in Hawaii, so the cinematic quality is amazing. My son's... Uh, Shane and Josh did an excellent job uh, directing it, uh, editing it, and, and doing all the real hard work of doing this show. And and so uh, check it out. EWTN starts airing the first week of September, and also you it'll be up on Prime Video sometime soon too. So check out Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Uh, it's an immersive motorcycle reality TV show. 
something that can reach reach uh, men especially who may not be otherwise reachable. Our, our guest today is Anthony DiStefano, and we're talking about how do you seek God's, how do you really seek God's will for your life? Uh, you know, God God plants desires in our hearts, but we have to we have to spend that time with the Lord. There's no substitute. You know, people tell me, well, how do I surf? How can I get ready to surf? Well, what should I do in the weight room? What, what should I do? Should I be running? Uh, how many miles a day should I run? And we, we all, all surfers just always say there's no substitute for time in the water. You got to be in the water if you want to surf. Same thing is with, with if you want to serve the Lord and you want to ride the waves of the Holy Spirit, you got to spend time in prayer. And when you do that, the fun thing about praying and, and doing that, our own, our own uh, creed is that the most radical quest you can have in life is to abandon yourself to God's will. So if you, if you, if you abandon your, your, uh, yourself to God's will, get ready for a wild adventure. And that's what our guest, Anthony DiStefano, is, is talking with about us here. He's, uh, he's an author of over 20 books. And uh, what is the title of the new book, Anthony, before we go on? 30 Days to Your, 30 days to your New Life, A Guide to Transforming Yourself from Head to Soul. Head to Soul. And we're talking about goal, goal setting. Um, you know, I, I, I've always thought, <clears throat> when, I, when I encourage people, I tell them, dream big, b- dream wild, write, out, write those down. Like I, I have right here, I can reach and grab, here's about a, here, here's about a half a dozen leather bound books of, of my dreams. Uh, but then, but then you, have to, you have to parse those down and say, Lord, what is your will? And then you cipher them down and cipher them down. You hear the still small voice of God and you go, okay, I'm going to do that. And then, uh, and then you begin to write that down. But you don't just write down the goal in a practical way. Uh, my dad always used to say, too, you set goals that you have to grow to become. You know, that involved personal, uh, spiritual and, 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 and personal development. What did, when you go through that process of discerning, the Lord is this you. Uh, and by the way, my dad used to say, you write, in, you write in pencil, God writes in ink. But as you pursue that, as you pursue it, God can direct you. You can't fly that plane that's on your credenza, Anthony, unless it's you've got you reach rotation speed, right? And you take off. That's right. And you've got to when it comes to goal setting again, I couldn't agree more about dreaming big. You've got to have a big enough why. Mm. W why. Uh, you've got to know why you want the goal. To say mm. that you're going to lose 15 pounds or 20 pounds, that's boring. Uh, it doesn't inspire anybody. And the second that you see a beautiful ice cream sundae in front of you, it's not going to, uh, you're, gonna, you're going to fall because your goal isn't big enough. The mm. goal should be, I want to stay healthy so I could see my grandchild get through college. Yeah. Yes. You know? It's got to, you've got to not just write down the goal, but you've got to write down why do you want the goal? And you've got to make it as big as and inspiring as possible because, listen, life is difficult, as you know, and there are going to be obstacles that get in your way. And rather than being, rather than pushing up some big uh, weight up a hill, rather, if you get a goal that's big, it will pull you into the future. The goal will pull you into the future through the storms and obstacles that you're going to face. So you've got to write down big goals and and always give your why for it. And then, of course, the why, yes, the why is the most important thing next to praying to God, because God, he will help you overcome whatever obstacles you get in your way if it's the right goal. Um, And he'll put obstacles in your way that you will not be able to get over. Amen. Not his will. You know, let me give you an example. I'd helped develop the world, you know, International Tandem Surfing Association, developed the world tour in tandem surfing. And it was a big deal. And I mean, I was I got a couple world titles and I was traveling the world and promoting mostly other people. And then all of a sudden it was just like there was a roadblock. It just like there was just this wall. And I no longer, uh, it was really going to be complex for me to continue to pursue it. But also the desire went away, Anthony. And so last night I got a text from someone about the current, uh, the current uh, big sur- uh, tandem surf contest, which I'm not involved with. And I go, oh, yeah, I miss those days. I, Gosh, maybe I should have continued in that w- path. And the next second, the promo for Long Ride Home came on on EWTN. And I'm like, yes. So the Lord, the, yes, remember uh, to pray that prayer, Lord, open doors and close doors. Why waste time and energy on something that isn't the Lord's will? Because ultimately it's not going to fulfill you. That's right. And the desires that a pe- that a person has to do to do something, those are clues that God give you. 
that God gives you. They're yes. not necessarily. Lots of people, they have a desire to be an actor, uh, and they really think they want to be an actor. But what they really, what they really have is a clue that God has given them that they have something about them that's that's creative and mm -hmm. it needs to be expressed. And maybe it's not an acting. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's in being a mother. Maybe it's in being a father. You don't know. You don't get that clarity unless you're praying regularly. And this is another thing I like to say. You know, we Catholics especially, mm -hmm. we're so lucky because not only do we have recourse to prayer at, at any time, uh, but we also have the body, blood, soul, and divinity mm. available to us. We can go to a Eucharistic adoration chapel and speak mm. to Jesus. Mm. in the flesh mm -hmm. you know we could right mm. be there in front of him mm. no 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 less than the apostles had jesus we can have jesus you can go to mass every single day in, instead of just one day a week you can pray novenas you can pray the rosary you know gk chesterton said that you know the christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting it's been found difficult and left untried right the that's right that if you've got a lot of problems in your life right now and nothing's going right and you've tried everything well guess what i bet you haven't tried everything i bet you haven't amen, amen. Been saying or going to jesus in the eucharist scatteration do that and then see what happens miracles it, will start happening in your life. Yeah, yes and you know walls will stay that should be there and walls just will f collapse and aren't supposed to be there um and and the, you know i i had a very i've had a few very p pivotal times in my life one in particular when i was asking god's will you know what is your will lord uh should i pursue being married or should i be a priest i really wanted to be someone who would be a father and be married but everyone around me was saying you need to be a priest and i did something that you talk about in your book i wanted on, i went on an extended eight-day fast and it was at the end of that eight days that I that I uh, met the mother of my children. So so the, in your book you say something really not very fun. You talk about fasting. That's right. That, why I do? Fasting why is, is that so important? important. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, fasting is not just abstaining from food or drink. Uh, you can fasting can have a broader meaning. You could fast from any activity, like going on social media or watching TV or listening to music. The whole point is that. Uh, it's got to be hard. It's got to be difficult. And, and the fact is that these acts of self-denial can be very beneficial in developing your willpower. Mm. Bear about the willpower. What you have to understand is in, in, so many of the problems that we have in life today are the result of our weakened will. Yes. Over the years, our, our will has been has lost its innate power. Mm -hmm. The world and all its glittering attractions and temptations have 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 through advertising and Hollywood and the music industry you know, have eroded our will and make, mm. made the will go up. When you fast, you say no to the world. You say no to instant gratification. You say no to your body. You say no to emotions. You say no to your whole psychology and physiology. So it's this radical uh, pattern interrupt, a, a, an interruption in the way you, your usual self-indulgent way of dealing with the world that can have a transformational effect on your life. Because when you, when you stop eating, it, it purifies your body. Uh, it, it does something to your will by strengthening it. Strengthening it. It does yes, something Yes, from the outside brain. in. From the out, it's, or I don't yeah. know how you say it, but yeah, when I pedal my bicycle across the United States, that was more of an act of will than a physical thing. When you fast, that's strengthening. That's your will saying to your body, "No, I'm in charge, not you." That's right. You and know, your and, brain and, learns and, that. Your brain learns, "I do have self control." I and your soul, okay, it, it actually also acts as a form of penance for mm -hmm. bad behavior and a form of preparation for better behavior in the future. If you read the Bible, before anybody did any kind of great action, including our Lord, they always fasted beforehand. Including so Jesus. If you're on a, on a self-transformation program, then by all means, you know, do a 24-hour fast, do a 36-hour fast. You could take it, you can do it. Yeah, you can. You can go for days without food. You need water, but you can go days without food. Right. Uh, and the thing, and the, 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 the thing about that, it is also spiritual warfare. It clears the room. Of, of of any demonic overtones and things like that. It's just there was at one point the disciples said, oh, "How come we couldn't cast out that demon?" He goes, "This doesn't come out except for by prayer and fasting." So fasting and praise are two great spiritual weapons. We're talking with my good friend, my dear friend, someone who means so much to me, Anthony De Stefano. Anthony, what's the title of your book again? Uh, Thirty days to your new life 
a, a guide to transforming yourself from head to soul. From head to soul, published by my publisher too, Sophia. And I just to remind everybody, it was Anthony who got me my first my first uh, introduction, uh, introduced me to my literary manager that launched uh, my writing and really the rest of my my whole ministry. It was Anthony and Stefano. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Want to invite you to go to deepadventure.com and go to and become part of Bear's Man Cave and the and the School of Manliness. The men there we join. We have our non Facebook community. We have once a month Zoom meetups where we talk story uh, and and uh, go through um, that month's curriculum in the School of Manliness. We have twenty four about twenty four months worth of curriculum that we go together month by month as the men, but also fathers are doing this with their sons. And also mothers, especially single moms, are doing this with their sons. And the Mama Bears, we invite you to go there too. We have a whole one-year curriculum for you as well. So go to deepadventure.com, become part of the Man Cave or the Mama Bears, and also subscribe to our email. You'll get to see, uh, you'll get to see our uh, guests. Uh, the YouTube version of the radio show is sent to you before it even airs on EWTN. So you get to see the, you get to see. Uh, how handsome Anthony DiStefano is, our current our current guest. Um, Anthony DiStefano is the author of over 20 books. He's a member of the Knights of Malta, private pilot, and uh, and I always tell I always uh, tell him uh, he needs to start by locating like Padre Saint Padre Pio to get all the work done that he gets done. <laughs> but welcome back. And what is the title of our of, of the new book? Anthony. Uh, 30 Days to Your New Life, a guide to, um, gee, now I'm even forgetting, a guide to transforming yourself from head to soul. 30 Days to Your New Life. They do say it takes 30 days to form a new habit. If someone is saying, you know what, I really need to start doing a, 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 a one-mile walk every day, you have to do that for 30 days. And then it actually becomes, it's actually just the way we're wired, right? It, be kind of, it becomes part of our nature to do that. I know that at a certain hour every day, my body, my mind, my soul just says, Oh, you didn't go. You didn't go swimming today. You know, a, a basic thing that I do. You, you know, what are you, you? You're punishing me. I want to go swimming. You know, the habit is built into me. So, talk. Yeah, that, yeah, and you know, and people have asked me why 30 days. It's not just because the figure 30 days of what you just said about how it takes that long to build a habit, but it's also important to chunk things down into small. Uh, they call it the salami technique. Slice, mm. slice. Mm. You know, especially if you feel overwhelmed by your problems. 
you know, you can't binge or, and solve all the problems at once. It didn't take you to amass all your problems in one day. You're mm. not going to solve all your problems mm. in one day. So the point of this 30 days was to harness the power of momentum. What happens is people get so uh, overwhelmed by their problems that it paralyzes them. They can't do it. They can't take any action. Uh, and the only time that they do take action is when they get so overwhelmed that they're about to explode. And that's a terrible way to mm. live, the better way. And that's to harness the power of momentum. That's to do small actions, but to do them consistently in every area, whether it's your finances, your family, your relationships, especially your relationship with God, you know, your health. And and we all know this is true. You know, the first trip, trip to the gym is the hardest. It's like yeah. torture. The second trip is a little easier. The third trip is easier still. By the fourth time, you're raring to go. Even if there's a blizzard, you're going to go to the gym. So, you know, we have to, uh, slow and steady wins the race. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have to remember, too, this is founded in good theology because when God saved the world, Bear, what did he do? He became a, a little baby, you know, in a little humble stable. Now, if God chose to start small, why shouldn't we? We should employ the same strategy. So this book you know, gives you 30 days of small actions every single day. And by the time the book is done, I hope people are raring to go and will, you know, have a tremendous amount of uh, momentum and acceleration. Well, I love that, Anthony. You know, <clears throat> we were traveling, we were, we were sailing, in, sailing in BVI's, as you know, and then we got delayed. Our, 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 our flights got all messed up. We were supposed to talk earlier. And then we got COVID. <laughs> that pushed it back further. So I'm a champion. I survived COVID. But, uh, but I, your book never got to me. So I never got to read your approach to it. So there's a there's a a day by day thing you do for thirty days in your book. A, a every, path. Every chapter, every chapter is one day. Some of the chapters, especially at the beginning, are small chapters. It's designed that way. I tell readers not to skip ahead. Resist right. the urge. There are action items at the end of each chapter. They're easy. Some of them are challenging. But the point is that as you go by week one, week two, week three gets harder. Week four is a little bit harder still. But, you know, you, you begin to uh, uh, strengthen your will and you build momentum. It's like this airplane. You know, when you mm -hmm. when you go to take off bear and you press the throttle full up, you know, at first you're going very slowly. A little child could outrun the plane. But within a few minutes, you're accelerating and you're achieving liftoff. It's the very same with everything in life. You start slow and you will pick up momentum and you will take off. That's so interesting because, you know, like, when you fly in a plane, you're, you, it's really loud. You're pull, pushing that throttle as hard as you can to get it to move. The inertia of rest. I, I think the, fir the first day is hard because you're going to say, "Well, why should I do take this step?" Because I'm probably not going to do it the next day anyway. You, you have to, you have to, um, put your pedal to the metal and go. But I remember, like, when I when I paddle this Molokai Channel, it's 30 miles. You know how I did it, Anthony. How? I did it one paddle stroke at a time. And when I pedaled across the United States, I pedaled my pedal on my bicycle one pedal at a time. If you just do the first thing uh, and then do the second thing and then the third thing, and by the time you're up in there flying that plane, the, the engine is throttled back. You're not having to push nearly as hard as it takes to get it going. That's right. It's doing the work on its own. And, you know, you mentioned something there that's very important, inertia. That's a law of physics, just like the law of momentum. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. And this is especially true mm. in physics, but it's true for any kind of person experiencing a funk. You know, when you're overweight and out of shape, you're essentially at rest and you tend to stay at rest. You don't want to go to the gym and exercise or lift weights. When your finances are a shambles, you know, and you owe everybody money, you're at rest and you tend to stay at rest. You don't want to look at a balance sheet. You don't want to cut your credit cards. All mm -hmm. you want to do is go watch TV or, uh, the, you know, watch a movie or have sex or something to distract yourself. So, you know, it, this is true for every problem in life. And, but yet when an, an object starts to move, it moves slowly at first. It doesn't go full speed instantaneously. And that's where you have to build momentum. Well, this is what that's, that's the key of this book. I just want to say, Anthony, you know, th I've had some cool feelings like dropping in at Waimea Bay when it's 30, 30 foot, you know. But you want to know one of the, this is so strange to say, but you want to know what the, one of the coolest feelings in the world is, is <clears throat> doing a deadlift that is heavier than you've ever lifted before. And you know when you go to when it's so fascinating to me when you go to do that that deadlift, and you and you your technique and everything is good and you and you and you start that lift, it may not move for eight seconds, and you may think, 
oh, I'm going to get more and more exhausted. It's not going to move. But it's it's there's something physically <laughs> happening. There's some sort of physics going on where um, that bar is getting some kind of energy. And if you just keep, you know, doing the deadlift, suddenly it starts to move. And it's one of the most exhilarating feelings in the world to feel that bar move. But here's another key. When you're doing a bench press or something like that, too, you know what you have? You have a spotter. Someone there with you. And that's why I love your book is because it's Anthony DeStefano was that right there with you as your spotter, encouraging you and helping you make that. And when, when, when a spotter comes to help someone, a lot of times it's just a fingertip lifting the bar, you know, just a little bit. And then you're doing the rest. So this book is like having a, a champion weightlifter who's, who's lived this book coming alongside you and saying, you can do this. I'll be your spotter, but you got to do the work. You know, let, let's get rolling. Well, 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 it is. I hope that it's encouraging. It is a little bit of a tough love approach. I do want to warn people, and I warn people at the beginning of the book, too. I think I'm a little bit like a drill sergeant uh, some of the time, but uh, I don't think that people will be put off by that. You know, I, I'm Italian. I grew up with a bunch of loud, tough-talking Italians and Irish and Puerto Ricans and Jews, so I have it naturally in me to be a kind of a drill sergeant. But I think that that's the exact type of tone that's necessary for a book like this, because if people want to change their lives, if, if you really want to, to stop, to get people to stop the nonsense and stop making excuses and get off their butts and start doing things right for a change, then tough love is, is, is going to help them. And the Bible says if, if, if the trumpet sounds an uncertain call, mm. who will arise for battle? Mm. Nobody. So this book, you know, sounds a very certain call, and I hope that people will see because it does have a playful tone at times. That you know, while I'm being tough, I'm coming from a place of of love and really wanting uh, to help uh, the the people who are reading it. We love Anthony DeStefano. Um, we're coming to an end of our end of end of our our time together, Anthony. What is what is the title of the book again? A Thirty Days to Your New Life: A Guide to Transforming Yourself from Head to Soul. And you can find it at Sophia Institute. We, you can find it at uh, Amazon. You can find it at a lot of bookstores, I, I'm sure. And, and and Anthony, where can they find you? Can if people want to reach out to your website or? Sure, sure. If they don't mind my uh, long Italian name, www.anthonydestefano.com, and you'll find all my books and uh, more information about me. And you can't buy books on that website, uh, but but you'll find a, a lot of, about my books and my work. Our guest today is Anthony Stefano, and uh, thank you, Anthony, for being with us. I want until next week. We want to uh, uh, wish you may the breath, breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. That's our traditional way of closing our show. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. I'm right at the end. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.